Yeah, it's on. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? We're, we're soon ready to start. Uh, the Grand Master has asked, if anyone has a cell phone with them today, would they please either turn it off or place it on vibrate during the meeting? Thank you. Forward, march. Grand Lodge Party, halt! Move in order, inward, face! Worshipful Grand Master. The Grand Lodge officers will take their respective stations and places.
by the authority in me vested as Right Worshipful Grandmaster, I hereby authorize an open communication and declare the annual Grand communica Communication of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania be now open for the further dispatch of business. Brother Nathan C. Minnick, Grand Chaplain, give the opening prayer. Most holy and glorious Lord God, thou great architect of heaven and earth, who art the giver of all good gifts and graces, and hast promised that where two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. In thy name we assemble and meet together, most humbly beseeching thee to bless us in all our undertakings, that we may know and serve thee aright, and that all our doings may tend to thy glory. Amen. So mote it be. the flag ceremony. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brother Dominic, Grand Chaplain. O eternal God, through whose mighty power our fathers won their liberties of old, grant we beseech thee that we and all the people of the land may with loyalty, fidelity, and courage maintain these liberties protect and assist all who are serving their country, at home or abroad, by land, by sea, or in the air, that they, being armed with thy defense, may be preserved evermore in all perils, 
and being filled with wisdom and girded with strength, may do their duty to thy honor and glory. Amen. So mote it be. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Ladies, brethren, and guests, good morning. Good morning, Master. It is so great to see everyone here today. What a wonderful day it's going to be, passing from one administration to the next. Brother Jeff, I wish you all the best. <laughs> I'd also like to welcome all those joining us remotely today. Brother Grand Marshal. It is time for the official reception of our distinguished guest. You will present them at this time. Brethren, ladies, and guests, if you will remain seated while we, while we greet each one, and at the close of that, we will extend our customary Masonic greetings. Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Donald C. Jones, Most Worshipful Grand Master of the Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of Pennsylvania, and Brother Timothy Kager, Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden, and Brother Eric Williams, Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warder.
Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Ronald C. Mitchum, Most Worshipful Past Grandmaster of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of South Carolina, and Brother Gerald L. Craigner, Most Worshipful Grand Secretary of the Most Wor and also a Most Worshipful Past Grandmaster. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Matthew Samoski, Senior Grand Deacon of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Ancient Free and Accepted Masons in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you David L. Tucker, Right Worshipful Deputy Grandmaster of the Grand Lodge of Most Ancient and Honorable Society of Free and Accepted Masons in the state of New Jersey. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Daniel Hotchkiss, Right Worshipful Deputy Grandmaster of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Ancient and Honorable Fraternity, Free and Accepted Masons of the State of New Hampshire. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Robert B. Elston, Right Worshipful Grandmaster of the Grand Lodge of the Most Ancient and Honorable Society of Free and Accepted Masons in the State of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, and Brother Ronald Reed, Right Worshipful Grand Secretary.
Irishable Grandmaster. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Stephen Tucker, Most Worshipful Deputy Grandmaster of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Ancient Free Accepted Masons in Delaware, and Brother Glenn F. Davis Sr., Right Worshipful Grand Secretary and Most Worshipful Past Grandmaster. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Stephen M. Gr Grindle, Right Worshipful Deputy Grandmaster of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons in the State of Ohio, and Brother Keith W. Newton, Most Worshipful Grand Secretary and a Most Worshipful Past Grandmaster, and Brother Richard Dickershide, Most Worshipful Past Grandmaster. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Keith Ryerson, Right Worshipful Grand Secretary of the Grand Lodge of Ancient Free and Accepted Masons of Minnesota. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother U Lewis Youngblood, Most Worshipful Grandmaster of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Ancient Free Accepted Masons of the State of West Virginia.
Right Worshipful Grandmaster. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you companion Michael Klinger, most excellent Grand High Priest of the Grand Holy Royal Arch Chapter of Pennsylvania, and companion George F. Morrow, most excellent Grand Secretary. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you illustrious companion Richard Flessler, Most Puissant Grandmaster of the Grand Council of Royal and Select Master Masons of Pennsylvania. Skip that. <laughs> right Worshipful Grandmaster, I'd like to introduce to you Sir Knight. Mattern, Right Eminent Grand Commander of the Grand Commandery of Knights Templar of Pennsylvania. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you the illustrious Robert J. Bateman, 33rd degree, Deputy and Active Member for Pennsylvania of the Supreme Council of Sovereign Grand Inspectors General of the 33rd degree of Ancient Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry for the Northern Masonic Jurisdiction of the United States of America and a Right Worshipful Past Grandmaster of Pennsylvania. Accompanying him, the illustrious Thomas R. LeBaugh, 33rd degree, active member for Pennsylvania. The illustrious Paul J. Root, 33rd degree, active member for Pennsylvania. The illustrious George Nenonetsky, 33rd degree, active emeritus member for Pennsylvania. In the East with you, the illustrious Thomas K. Sturgeon, 33rd degree, Grand Chancellor active emeritus member for Pennsylvania, and also a past Grand Master. A little better.
Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you James Weisenreed, Provincial Grandmaster of the Provincial Grand Lodge, United States of America of the Royal Order of Scotland, and William M. Kratzenberg, Provincial Grand Secretary and Treasurer. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Knight Companion John A. Habel, Intendant General Division of Pennsylvania Western of the United Grand Imperial Council of Knights of the Red Cross of Constantine and Dependent Orders for the United States of America, Mexico, and the Philippines. Accompanying him, Knight Companion Henry Lesher, Intendant General of Pennsylvania Central, and also Knight Companion, Victor Crooks II, Intendant General Division of Pennsylvania Eastern. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you, seated in the East, Brother Thomas K. Sturgeon, Second Vice President of the George Washington Masonic Memorial and a past Grandmaster. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother William L. Kingsbury, Chief Executive Director of the Masonic Charities of Pennsylvania. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you S. Alexander Fizz, Executive Director, Pennsylvania Masonic Youth Foundation.
Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you in the East, Brother Harry A. Rudder, Executive Director of Operations of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Ryan Kraus, State Master Counselor, Pennsylvania, D. Malay of the International Order of D. Malay, and Brother Rodney Boyce, past District Deputy Grand Master and Executive Officer. Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Helen B. Snedden, Supreme Inspector, Pennsylvania Rainbow of the International Order of Rainbow for Girls, and Ashley Swagger, Grand Worthy Advisor. Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Melinda Culp, Acting Grand Guardian of the Job's Daughters International, and accompanying her, Corinne Baker, Miss Job's Daughter of Pennsylvania, and Delaney Staines, Miss Junior Job's Daughter, and Kristen Kessler, Honored Queen, Bethel Number 16. Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Linda E. Watson, Worthy Grand Matron of the Pennsylvania Grand Chapter of the Order of Eastern Star, and Virginia L. Plyler, Grand Secretary, Past Grand Matron, and Brother Jeffrey Miller, Worthy Grand Patron.
Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Mary Wyatt, Supreme Royal Matron of the Supreme Council, Order of Amaranth, and Brother George Kunz, Supreme Royal Patron, Miranda Parasol, Grand Royal Matron of the Grand Court of Pennsylvania, Order of Amaranth, and Brother Seth Anthony, Grand Royal Patron, and Brother Sandra Kruntz, Grand Secretary. Ladies and guests, please give a round of applause for our distinguished guests. <laughs> Brother Grand Marshal. Conduct Brother Thomas K. Sturgeon, Right Worshipful Past Grand Master and Second Vice President of the George Washington Masonic Memorial to the East to make a presentation. <laughs> uh, sit down, John. <laughs> I thought you did enough for the day, John. I'll determine that. <laughs> right Worshipful Grand Master. On behalf of the George Washington Masonic National Memorial, it's a pleasure here to bring to, with, to you today a plaque showing the appreciation of you and all of Pennsylvania Freemasonry. For any of you in the room who have never seen the George Washington Masonic National Memorial, you should make it an effort to do so. It's one of the most statuesque Masonic buildings in the world in Arl Arlington, Virginia. What you need to know more than that that when it was built in 1921, the main person in charge, the person who picked the architect, the person who found the funding, the person who picked the materials, the person who made the George Washington Masonic National Memorial is a past Grand Master, Lewis Waters, from Pennsylvania. You should be proud of that, and because of him, I represent him and all the officers of the board and present this to the Grand Master and to all of Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, we got to get our 
picture here. Brother Graham Marshall. Conduct Brother Ronald A. Young Sr., Right Worshipful Past Grandmaster to the East to make a presentation on behalf of the National Masonic Foundation for Children. And I say it again. Hey, it's still noontime, just remember that. <laughs> okay. It gives me great pleasure to present to our Grand Master this certificate of appreciation in supporting the National Masonic Foundation for Children. Our, our group of past Grand Masters and also Masons secure funds and we give training for teachers across the nation, helping children that are at rest, whether they be in issues of family or issues of drug and alcohol, our teachers are challenged every day as they face the children's challenges within their classrooms. And it's because of the funding that our Grand Lodge and other Grand Lodges have pro provided allows this training to continue. So Grand Master, if I may present this. Right Worshipful Grand Secretary, make a pre presentation on behalf of the Masonic Service Association. Right Worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of the Masonic Service Association of North America, this certificate of appreciation is presented to Brother Thomas Gammon IV, Right Worshipful Grand Master. Given in sincere appreciation for your abiding interest and strong support to the programs of Masonic Service Association, given time to our National Hospital Visitation Program and for encouraging the MSA representatives, deputies, and volunteers of Pennsylvania. With this certificate go our best wishes for continued successes and services to our gentle craft. Presented this 27th day of December 2021, Earl J. Washburn, past Grand Master, Executive Commissioner, and Craig L. Davis, Administrator. Is Brother David Hallowell in the uh, in the room? Guess not. Okay. Right Worshipful Grand Secretary. Right Worshipful Grand Secretary. Read the summary of the resolution for the creation of the Pennsylvania Grand Master's Outstanding Service Award. Right Worshipful Grand Master. At the December 5, 2007 quarterly communication and under the direction of Right Worshipful Grand Master, Brother Ronald A. Unk Sr., the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania adopted a resolution for the creation of the Grand Master's Outstanding Service Award to honor Pennsylvania Freemasons as well as Freemasons of other jurisdictions who have distinguished themselves to their community, their Blue Lodge, and their respective Grand Lodge. The purpose of the medal is to honor these brethren who have rendered outstanding service to Freemasonry and or their community in general or their Grand Lodge in particular. The intended recipients are chosen by the Right Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Grand Marshal, present our recipients to the East.
congratulations. You have definitely earned this. Thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. Thank you. Huh? I don't want to shake hands. I don't care. <laughs> Let me shake hands. Jeffrey, you have definitely earned this. Thank you. Thank you. You are very welcome. Now we got to shake hands. <laughs> I was told. <laughs> but you really want to do that. I do. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. All three. Hey. Yo, you guys, you want to get over here so I get a picture too? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, another round of applause for our recipients. In their respective duties, they've gone above and beyond. It's my pleasure to be able to present them with that, that award. Ladies, brethren, and guests of Freemasonry, good morning again. Good morning. It's so great to see everyone here today. I think that I can probably sum up the last two years simply by saying, well, that didn't go as planned. <laughs> it surely didn't. We started the term in December of 2019, conducting business as usual. Then came March of 2020, when we had to make the difficult decision to shut down our beloved Masonic world as we knew it. There was a lot of fear due to the uncertainty and the unknown of this virus. I know personally that I was very concerned that when and if we returned to Masonic labor, would the fraternity still be here? And if it was, what condition would it be in? Those many sleepless nights, as I know now, were all for naught because our love and our passion for our beloved fraternity and the values we stand for are much stronger than this pandemic ever could be. Throughout the shutdown, it was very evident to me that our members would do anything possible to keep Freemasonry alive and keep in touch with their brethren. From purchasing and delivering groceries for our shut-ins to perfecting new and innovative ways to hold meetings, formal and informal, online. Many of those are still in place today. That is why I am so confident that we will not only survive this pandemic, but we will continue to grow and be the guiding light for humanity well into the future because we all know that this world needs our values and our dedication, in my opinion, more today than at any other time in history. I want this fraternity to live on and on so that when my grandson and his grandson come knocking at the outer door for membership, it is here to receive them. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for all of your understanding, support, guidance, and more especially for your friendship that you have shown to Cheryl and myself over the last eight years. These are things that Cheryl and I will be eternally grateful for and will cherish for the rest of our lives. May God continue to bless you and your families, the United States of America, 
and this, our beloved fraternity. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. As I know some of you have heard recently, because I've been traveling through the 40th Masonic District, that was a district I was a district deputy grandmaster for. And I wanted to visit all the lodges for all the men that were there to support me all the way through. And I want to say again, from the bottom of my heart, I am eternally grateful to each and every one of you for keeping the passion of this fraternity alive through some very difficult, difficult times. It has not been easy for myself, has not been easy for you. I took away from you something back in March of 2020 that we so dearly love, and that is what we are doing today, gathering together in person. And I was very, very worried that we might not survive this pandemic as a fraternity that we know now. But we have survived. We are growing, and it's because of each and every one of you. It's not because of myself. It's not because of your right worshipful officers. We're basically figureheads. You are the fraternity. You are the people that are going to make this thing grow into the future. So again, thank you so very, very much. I'll miss you. I'm not going too far, but I understand Cheryl has a heck of a list for me at home. <laughs> but good luck in the future, and I hope to see you all soon again. Thank you again. Brother Ray. Nah, we're good. We're good. Thank you. Sit. <laughs> Brother Ray. God, his 
his son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died have take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Brother Graham Marshall, conduct most worshipful Brother Donald C. Jones, most worshipful Grand Master of the most worshipful Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, Prince Hall affiliated to the East for a presentation. Mark. It seems like about 10 years ago we did this, back during COVID. But I have a presentation, a resolution for this, and I didn't want to send it to you in the mail. Okay. Whereas the right worship of Grand Lodge of the most ancient and honorable fraternity of free and accepted Masons of Pennsylvania and Masonic jurisdiction thereunto belonging has in Article 3.01 of the Hyman Reason 
provided for honorary members specifically elected by the Grand Lodge, and whereas Brother Donald C. Jones, a member of Sons of Light Lodge, number 120, working under the jurisdiction of the Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, has served the craft in general with honor and distinction, both to himself and to the Masonic organizations with which he has been affiliated. And whereas Brother Jones has been proposed as an honorary member to be elected as such by this Grand Lodge affected this second day of December, 2020. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Brother Donald C. Jones, a member, a member of Sons of Light Lodge, number 120, working under the jurisdiction of Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, is hereby elected this second day of December, 2020, by the right worshipful Grand Lodge of the most ancient and honorable fraternity of free and accepted Masons of Pennsylvania and Masonic jurisdiction thereunto belonging as an honorary member of the said Grand Lodge and for the honor hereby conferred upon him by his brethren, he is to be given all due respect by the fraternity. Witness our hand and seal of the said Grand Lodge at Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, this second day of December, AD 2020, AL 6020. My brother, it's a long time coming. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very uh, welcome. Grandmaster Gaiman, you know, we've talked and talked, like you said, over the years. And uh, this is an honor. Uh, always cherish uh, our friendship. It started before COVID, and it, we talked during it. And I just want to let you know that I want to congratulate you for the last two years. Somebody said yesterday, uh, Somebody had to get this organization through the last two years. Okay, you need a captain in front of that ship to steer that ship. We got a good seafaring man, and uh, you did it, my brother. You Thank did you, it. my okay. friend. Thank you so much. You. <laughs> yes, we got to tilt it forward. I know that. <laughs> Thank you so much. It means so much to me to be able to present that to you. Brother Grand Marshal, got to catch up to him. <laughs> that went well. We're ahead of schedule. I'll have you know, the uh, Deputy Grand Master just said, we're ahead of schedule. You can drag it out for another hour. <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> That's right. Right Worshipful Grand Secretary, read so much of the minutes of the quarterly communication held June 5th, 2021, as relates to the election of Grand Lodge officers. Right Worshipful Grand Master. This being the time prescribed by the Hyman Reason for the annual election of the Grand Officers to serve this Grand Lodge during the ensuing Masonic year beginning on St. John the Evangelist's Day next. The following brethren were duly elected. Brother Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, Right Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Larry Arthur Durr, Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master. Brother Robert Darren Brink, Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden. Brother Paul Jeffrey Roop, Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden. Brother Adam Christopher Hess, Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer, and Brother Mark Allen Haynes, Right Worshipful Grand Secretary. Before we get started, you'll see that our Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master elect is not here today. His wife took a fall uh, Christmas Eve. She has a couple of fractured ribs, so she, uh, Brother Larry decided to stay home with her, which was the right move. Brother Paul Jeffrey Roop. You have been elected Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden to serve this Grand Lodge for the present Masonic year until your successor is duly installed beginning this day. Are you prepared to take upon yourself the necessary obligation? I am Right Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Grand Marshal, conduct the Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden elect in front of the altar.
Brother Paul, Jeffrey Roop, remove your Masonic clothing, kneel upon both knees in front of the altar, and lay both hands upon the Holy Bible, square and compasses. Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden, install Brother Paul Jeffrey Roop. He will say aye, pronounce your name in full, and recite your obligation. Aye. Paul Jeffrey Roop, of my own free will and accord, in the presence of Almighty God and this right worshipful Grand Lodge, do hereby, herein, and hereon, most solemnly, sincerely, and truly, promise, declare, and swear that I will serve as right worshipful Junior Grand Warden of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania for the present Masonic year and until my successor is duly installed, beginning this day. I will attend the annual Grand, quarterly, special, and extra communications Take my station therein and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability, unless prevented by sickness or some other unavoidable occurrence. In the absence of the right worshipful senior grand warden, I will take his station and perform the duties thereof. In the absence of the right worshipful deputy grand master and the right worshipful senior grand warden, I will take the station of the right worshipful deputy grand master and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability. In the absence of the right worshipful grand master, the Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master and the Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden, I will take the station of the Right Worshipful Grand Master and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability. I will keep, support, maintain and abide by all the ancient usages, customs, and landmarks of the fraternity, and the Constitution, rules, regulations, and edicts of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, I will assist the Right Worshipful Grand Master in seeing duly enforced to all of which I swear, without any equivocation, mental reservation, or self-evasion of mind in me whatever, but with a firm and steadfast resolution to keep and perform the same, binding myself under no less a penalty than that of having the penalties of all my former obligations inflicted upon me at one and the same time, if that were possible. So help me God, and keep me steadfast in this, my right worshipful junior grand warden's oath and obligation. You will kiss the Holy Bible and arise. <clears throat> I now invest you with the collar, to which is pendant the jewel of your office, the plum. Also with the apron, upon which is embroidered a representation of the same jewel. I present you with a copy of the Hyman Reason, the Constitution of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania which you have sworn to assist the Right Worshipful Grand Master in seeing duly enforced. I also present you with your column. It is the emblem of your authority. When the Grand Lodge is at labor, you will place it upon your pedestal in a horizontal position with the base toward the east. When called off from labor, you will place it in a perpendicular position. The Grand Lodge is then in your charge. You may permit brethren to retire, but allow no one to enter. I will now conduct you to your station. Brother Grand Marshal, make the usual proclamation.
Brethren, take notice that Brother Paul Jeffrey Roof, having been duly elected and installed Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden of the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of the Most Ancient and Honorable Fraternity of Free and Accepted Masons of Pennsylvania and Masonic Jurisdiction thereunto belonging, is hereby proclaimed as such. Brethren, take notice that Brother Paul Jeffrey Roop, having been duly elected and installed Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden of the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of the Most Ancient and Honorable Fraternity of Free and Accepted Masons of Pennsylvania and Masonic Jurisdiction thereunto belonging, is hereby proclaimed as such. Brethren, take notice that Brother Paul Jeffrey Roop, having been duly elected and installed Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden of the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of the Most Ancient and Honorable Fraternity of Free and Accepted Masons of Pennsylvania and Masonic Jurisdiction thereunto belonging, is hereby proclaimed as such. Brother Robert Darren Brink, you have been elected Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden to serve this Grand Lodge for the present Masonic year and until your successor is duly installed beginning this day. Are you prepared to take upon yourself the necessary obligation? I am Right Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Grand Marshal, conduct the Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden elect in front of the altar. Brother Robert Darren Brink, remove your Masonic clothing, kneel upon both knees in front of the altar, and lay both hands upon the Holy Bible, square, and compasses. Right Worshipful Deputy Grandmaster, install Brother Robert Darren Brink. That's you. Do I have to do this? will say I. Pronounce your name in full and recite your obligation. I, Robert Darren Brink, of my own free will and accord, in the presence of Almighty God and this right worshipful Grand Lodge, do hereby, herein, and hereon, most solemnly, sincerely, and truly, promise, declare, and swear <clears throat> that I will serve as right worshipful Senior Grand Warden of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania for the present Masonic year and until my successor is duly installed beginning this day. I will attend the annual grand, quarterly, special, and extra communications, take my station therein, and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability, unless prevented by sickness or some other unavoidable occurrence. In the absence of the right worshipful deputy grand master, I will take his station and perform the duties thereof. In the absence of the right worshipful grand master and the right worshipful deputy grand master, I will take the station of the Right Worshipful Grand Master and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability. I will keep, support, maintain, and abide by all the ancient usages, customs, and landmarks of the fraternity <clears throat> and the Constitution, rules, regulations, and edicts of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. I will assist the Right Worshipful Grand Master in seeing duly enforced. To all of which I swear, 
without any equivocation, mental reservation, or self-evasion of mind and me, whatever, but with a firm and steadfast resolution to keep and perform the same, binding myself under no less a penalty than that of having the penalties of all my former obligations inflicted upon me at one and the same time, if that were possible. So help me God and keep me steadfast in this, my right worshipful senior grand warden's oath and obligation. You will kiss the Holy Bible and arise. <clears throat> I now present you with a caller to which is pendant the jewel of your office, the level. Also with the apron upon which is embroidered a representation of the same jewel. I present you with a copy of the Hyman Reason, the Constitution of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, which you have sworn to assist me in, in seeing duly enforced. <laughs> <coughs> also with a gavel with which you will assist me in preserving order. I present you with your column, is the emblem of your authority. When the Grand Lodge is at labor, you will place it upon your pedestal in a perpendicular position. When called off from labor, you will place it in a horizontal position with the base toward the south. I will now conduct you to your station. Brother Grand Marshal, make the usual proclamation. Brethren, take notice that Brother Robert Darren Brink, having been duly elected and installed Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden of the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of the Most Ancient and Honorable Fraternity of Free and Accepted Masons of Pennsylvania and Masonic Jurisdiction, thereunto belonging, is hereby proclaimed as such. Brethren, take notice that Brother Robert Darren Brink, having been duly elected and installed Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden of the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of the Most Ancient and Honorable Fraternity of Free and Accepted Masons in Pennsylvania and Masonic Jurisdiction, thereunto belonging, is hereby proclaimed as such. Brethren, take notice that Brother Robert Darren Brink, having been duly elected and installed Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden of the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of the Most Ancient and Honorable Fraternity of Free and Accepted Masons of Pennsylvania and Masonic Jurisdiction, thereunto belonging, is hereby proclaimed as such.
Brother Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, you have been elected Right Worshipful Grandmaster to serve this Grand Lodge for the present Masonic year and until your successor is duly installed beginning this day. Are you prepared to take upon yourself the necessary obligation? I am Right Worshipful Grandmaster. Brother Grand Marshal, conduct the Right Worshipful Grandmaster elect in front of the altar. Brother Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, remove your Masonic clothing, kneel upon both knees in front of the altar, and lay both hands upon the Holy Bible, square and compasses. You will say I, pronounce your name in full, and recite your obligation. I, Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, of my own free will and accord, in the presence of Almighty God and this right worshipful Grand Lodge, do hereby, herein, and hereon, most solemnly, sincerely, and truly, promise, declare, and swear that I will serve as right worshipful Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania for the present Masonic year and until my successor is duly installed, beginning this day. I will attend the annual grand, quarterly, special, and extra communications, take my station therein, and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability, unless prevented by sickness or some other unavoidable occurrence. I will keep, support, maintain, and abide by all the ancient usages, customs, and landmarks of the fraternity, and the Constitution, rules, regulations, and edicts, I will see duly enforced. To all of which I swear, without any equivocation, mental reservation, or self-evasion of mind in me, whatever, but with a firm and steadfast resolution to keep and perform the same. So help me God, and keep me steadfast in this, my right worshipful Grand Master's oath and obligation. You will kiss the Holy Bible and arise. I now invest you with your collar, to which is pendant the jewel of the office. Also with the apron. I told the Grand Master, if he can't get it on this time, it's his problem. <laughs> I present you with a copy of the Hyman Reason, 
to the Constitution of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, which you have sworn to see duly enforced. I also present you with the gavel. It is the emblem of your authority. One rap commands silence. Two raps call up the, the Grand Lodge officers. Three raps, the entire Grand Lodge, and one rap seats them. I now invest you with your hat, which you, as right worshipful Grand Master, will wear during all sessions of the Grand Lodge, except during prayer, the administering of an obligation, or other occasions requiring its removal. I will now conduct you to your station. Brother Grand Marshal, make the usual proclamation. Brother, take notice. Brother Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, having been duly elected and installed right worshipful Grandmaster of the most ancient and honorable fraternity of free and accepted Masons in Pennsylvania and Masonic jurisdiction thereunto belonging, is hereby proclaimed as such. Brother, take notice that Brother Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, having been duly elected and installed right worshipful Grandmaster of the most ancient and honorable fraternity of free and accepted Masons in Pennsylvania and Masonic jurisdiction thereunto belonging, is hereby proclaimed as such. Brother, take notice that Brother Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, having been duly elected and installed right worshipful Grandmaster of the most ancient and honorable fraternity of free and accepted Masons in Pennsylvania and Masonic jurisdiction thereunto belonging, is hereby proclaimed as such. Brother and ladies and friends, assist me in welcoming our new Grand Master. I want, to, I want to thank everybody, but before we get into the program, there's two things I, I would like to say. First of all, today I want everybody to keep their eyes on our Grand Secretary, because I'm going to count how many times you can tell by his body language I'm going to be going off the rails, okay? <laughs> he, he doesn't like surprises. The second thing is, I didn't think my brethren in Freemasonry, my trusted, honest brethren would lie to me. The hat still fits. <laughs> Brother Grand Marshal, conduct the right worshipful Grand Master along with Brother David W. Morgan's Grand Chaplain and my wife Sharon to the altar.
Boy, that didn't last long. Almighty and everlasting God, the supreme architect of the universe, creator and ruler of men's and worlds, your servant, Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, humbly kneels before you at your altar to seek your blessing, your guidance, and your grace as he begins his term as the right worshipful Grand Master of Pennsylvania. We pray that you answer this prayer. Lord, thank you for specifically calling him to this position and gifting him with every skill necessary to be successful in this endeavor. Inspire him to do what is right, to lead in a manner pleasing to you and profitable to, for the fraternity. We ask that you grant him wisdom and clarity of thought in making and carrying out his decisions. We ask that you give him the courage to do what is needed to move our fraternity forward, and that he may always stay anchored to the founding principles of Freemasonry. We ask that you give him grace of character, that he may always act with humility, brotherly love, and affection. And Lord, we ask that you grant him joy and peace as he assumes this awesome mantle of responsibility. May he always look to you for comfort and direction. Lord, his new position impacts not only him, but also Sharon and his family. We ask that your blessings rest upon his entire family, we ask that you hold Sharon's hand as she supports and encourages him as she has done in the past. Give her strength, give her understanding, and give her peace. Bless their marriage and make their love for each other grow stronger during these next two years. Heavenly Father, you have been there from the beginning for both of them, and we know that you will be here for them tomorrow. Give them energy, vision, and compassion that your name may be glorified and that our fraternity may be improved by them. In your holy and powerful name we pray. Amen.
us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the Brother Timothy Pletcher, past district deputy grandmaster. Present Mrs. Cheryl Gammon to the east so she may present right worshipful past grandmaster Thomas Gammon IV with his past master's jewel, apron, and lapel pin.
is all yours. This is Gammy. And Glader's no pins to it. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right around. Let's go over here. Yes. <laughs> Help me tap. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> no, I'm not going to put it on. I'll just, I'll just hold it. No. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hey, hold on a second. Kenny, come on, Gomer. Come on, Gomer. You want me to use one? His name's not really Gomer, but that's the nickname <laughs> <laughs> he's been adopted with. <laughs> All the best. Thank you. Brethren, lady, ladies and friends, uh, as a presentation to, the, to a past Grand Master, they receive a commission recognizing the work they, has, they have done. Normally we would unwrap this, but then we have to travel with it, and somebody has to wrap it back up. So it was agreed by past Grand Master Gammon that we would leave it in the bubble wrap. Thank you. Should we get a picture with it? Yes, let's get a picture Where, with the Kenny bubble wrap. <laughs> And if I may add, we have an incredible, you can't shoot, but we have an incredible photographer, and he will Photoshop that, and you won't even know there was bubble wrap on it. Yeah, Hold do on one a more. Get them commissioned. Get back here. Let me take this off, sir. Okay, yeah. There you go. Okay. It's backwards. How's he going to Photoshop it? It doesn't matter. <laughs> he'll, pho he'll Photoshop it. All right, Worshipful Grand Secretary, read the summary of the resolution for the creation of the Pennsylvania Franklin Medal. All right, Worshipful Grand Master. All right, Worshipful Grand Master. At the March 7, 1979, quarterly communication, and under the direction of Right Worshipful Grand Master Walter P. Wells, the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania adopted a resolution for the creation of the Pennsylvania Franklin Medal to honor brother. Benjamin Franklin, who served this Grand Lodge as Right Worshipful Grand Master in 1734 and 1749. The purpose of the medal is to honor other distinguished members of the craft who have rendered outstanding service to Freemasonry in general or to this Grand Lodge in particular. The intended recipients are chosen by the Right Worshipful Grand Master, Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master, Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden, and Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden. Right Worshipful Past Grand Master Robert J. Bateman, will you assist me? Take that collar off. I will. He has a great idea. You just can't get away from him. I know. Above. There you 
go. Like that. Put this back on? Yes. Okay. My appointments for the following positions for the year 2021 are as follows. Will the new district deputy grandmasters please stand and be recognized as your name is announced by the Right Worshipful Grand Secretary? Right Worshipful Grandmaster. Brother Eric T. Downs, Lodge Number 475, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 5th Masonic District, Vice Brother Craig W. Schaefer. Brother Yasser A. Al Khatib, Lodge Number 308, District Deputy Grandmaster of the Sixth Masonic District, Vice Brother Jeffrey S. Heller. Brother Donald W. Rao, Lodge Number 344, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 14th Masonic District, Vice Brother Wendell R. Hunt. Brother Brian J. Tevlin, Lodge Number 317, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 17th Masonic District, Vice Brother Stephen L. G. Brother George F. Morrow, Lodge Number 272, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 26th Masonic District, Vice Brother Alan P. Duncan. And to Brother William L. Hers, Lodge Number 479, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 40th Masonic District, Vice Brother Timothy L. Pletcher. Brethren, thank you for the incredible amount of work you're gonna do for the next two years <laughs> in advance. Brethren, ladies, if you would. I would like to recognize the District Deputy Grand Masters who have completed their service for the Grand Lodge. Please stand and be recognized as your name is read by the Grand Secretary. Right Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Craig W. Schaefer, Lodge Number 343 of the 5th Masonic District. Brother Jeffrey S. Heller, Lodge Number 620 of the 6th Masonic District. Brother Wendell R. Hunt, Lodge Number 542 of the 14th Masonic District. Brother Stephen L. G., Lodge Number 247 of the 17th Masonic District. Brother Alan P. Duncan, Lodge Number 429 of the 26th Masonic District. And Brother Timothy L. Pletcher, Lodge Number 553 of the 40th Masonic District. Brethren, we are so grateful for the effort you put forth for the betterment, not only of your lodges, but your district as a whole and the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania in particular. Let's hear a round of applause. My appointment for the following positions for the year 2022 are as follows. Take your places as your name is announced by the Grand Secretary. Right Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Scott W. Williams, Lodge number 763, Senior Grand Deacon. Brother Edward Dietz, Lodge number 231, Junior Grand Deacon. Brother Charles G. Etling, number, Lodge number 346, Grand Steward. Brother Maxim Hammer, Lodge number 812, Grand Steward. Brother John A. Fair, Lodge number 521, Grand Marshal. Brother Jeffrey S. Moyer, Lodge Number 43, Assistant Grand Marshal. Brother Dylan Bonney, Lodge Number 346, Grand Sword Bearer. Brother Robert Mellon, Lodge Number 644, Grand Persevent. Brother Brian K. Fritz, Lodge Number 284, Grand Tyler. And Brother Edward J. Stum, Lodge Number 389, Assistant Grand Tyler.
Brethren, ladies, and friends, I believe it's quite an honor for brethren to be appointed to these positions. But you know I'm going to be a little different. Normally the appointments are for two years, but in an effort to, uh, to recognize more great members of the fraternity, I also have a second set of appointments which will take their positions in the year 2023. Please stand and be recognized as your name is announced by the Grand Secretary. Right, Worshipful Grandmaster, Brother Thomas E. Bonney, Jr., Lodge No. 346, Senior Grand Deacon. Brother Mark A. Halfley, Lodge No. 362, Junior Grand Deacon. Brother Louis E. Gromeller, Lodge No. 9, Grand Steward. Brother Justin D. Killian, Lodge No. 682, Grand Steward. And Brother Michael R. Bonney, Lodge No. 346, Grand Bursarman. Thank you. To be clear, the officers in 2023, the only one will remain for two years is my grandson, Dylan. And it's in recognition of the 100th anniversary of Pennsylvania D. Malay. Each one of these folks have been instrumental in D. Malay. And uh, my, my son is a West, is chapter advisor for Westmoreland. Dylan's the current master counselor. And uh, they all have uh, a lot to have to do with D. Malay, so I wanted to recognize D. Malay in my second year. And if you would, for all the appointments. My appointments as regional educators for the Committee on Education are as follows. Please stand and be recognized as your name is announced by the Grand Secretary. Right, Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Dennis Robinson, Lodge number 792, Chairman. Brother David Bullio, Lodge number 744, Region 1. Brother Barry Martz, Lodge number 315, Region 2. Brother Robert Snyder II, Lodge number 774, Region 3. Brother Thomas Anke, Lodge number 812, Region 4. Brother Keith McKnight, Lodge number 389, Region 5. Brother James O'Connor, Lodge number 700, Region 6, and Brother James Hodja, Lodge number 621, Region 7. Brethren, thank you for saying yes, and thank you for the incredible amount of work you're going to be charged with. Uh, you may sit down, and I just want to explain just a, just a bit about that. Historically, the Committee on Education has been charged with uh, officer training, uh, getting our officers ready to, to move up to Worshipful Master. We're going to have an enhanced mentoring program that is going to be mirrored after the schools of instruction. There will be mentor classes in each district. There will be district educators. There will be, we already have lodge mentors, and these are our regional instructors. At the deputy meeting tomorrow, they will be they are full-fledged Grand Lodge officers. They will receive purple aprons. They're going to be charged with an incredible amount of work. I believe education is a key part of what we're going to try and do over the next two years, and these folks are the key. So thank you very much for everything you're going to do, and I guarantee you, you better put your track shoes on. Brother Ronald A. Unk, Sr., please join me in the East. Grandmaster Ron, in recognition of your years of service, I think right after Brother Weiser, maybe, you took the helms of the Committee of Masonic Education and ran it flawlessly for 20 years, 15, 20 years, and you did a great job. And we are going to have the first uh, Masonic Educator Emeritus. Congratulations, and thank you for all your service to the Grand Lodge. Thank you. Grandmaster, thank you much. And thank you. Hold it. Thank you. Okay, now it says inaugural address. So, you know, this morning I got up, I don't know, couldn't sleep, who knew, right? Uh, and it's 5 a.m. Mark Haynes is already in his tuxedo packing his stuff up. I said to him, I said, you know, we've been working so hard on this. I said, Mark, what are you worried about? We got this. You know what his answer to me? 
I worry so you don't have to. And that's why we have a great grand secretary. Thank you very much, Mark. So Brother Mark has in here inaugural address, right? Guess what? We're not going to do that. That's the first time, right? So here's what I would like to do at this point. And I mean this. I want everybody to close their eyes. Close your eyes. And I want you to think back. I don't know what it was, 23 months ago, 22 months ago. Everybody was having a good time. My wife and I and the Haineses and the Grandmaster on my rare trip to Florida because I have, somebody has to stay home and pay for Florida. But my wife every now and then will invite me to go. So we decided we were going to take a week's vacation. I invited Brother Haynes and his wife and the Grand Master, and we're in Florida. And we're hearing about this thing called COVID. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I'm a tire guy, right? What do I know about COVID? I'm not really paying attention. I'm 10 feet tall and bulletproof. I could care less. So we're down there having a good time, and things start to get serious. It was the second weekend in March. On March 9th or 10th, we thought, uh-oh, we got a problem. And I watched the Grand Master, and we had conversations, and we were locked down. But ultimately, it was his decision. It was his decision to save lives. I can tell you what I would have done. I would have said, let's keep them open for the month of March, maybe into April, and see how it goes. The age of our membership, this disease is right in our wheelhouse. People would have died. But because of his years of safety training, I don't know, 35 years as a, as a fire chief and his training in all aspects of safety, without hesitation, without any whining or crying, woe is me, after I spent six years planning my two, he made the correct decision. And it wasn't easy. And I watched him for three days. But ultimately, it was his decision and I think we can all agree that he made the right call. So with that, Brother Haynes, I believe you have a duty. You can open your eyes. Right, Worshipful Grandmaster. The Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania Thompson Award for Saving a Human Life is awarded by the Grand Lodge to a member of the fraternity who is primarily responsible for saving the life of a fellow human being. This award is named for Brother John Thompson, a past master of Lodge Number 51 in Philadelphia, who served as Right Worshipful Grand Master in 1861 and 1862. He became a Mason in 1827, and during his 63-year tenure of membership, he served as a Lodge officer for 26 years and a Grand Lodge officer for 30 years. In fact, Brother Thompson was the only individual to ever serve in all six elected offices of the Grand Lodge. Brother Thompson's incomparable record of Masonic service might well have been enough to warrant the distinction of attaching his name to an award, but a singular incident in his life deserves particular notice. He was publicly acclaimed and cited by the Humane Society of Philadelphia for saving several persons from drowning in the Delaware River. His occupation of a barrel maker and his presence on the wharfs frequently gave him many opportunities to rescue persons from drowning and for these services was presented with a silver cup. The Thompson Award was designed by direction of Brother Robert L. DeLugge, Jr., Right Worshipful Grand Master, 2000 and 2001. It is a sterling silver cup handcrafted by Wendell August Forge of Grove City, Pennsylvania. It bears a unique emblem combining the traditional sign of aid and comfort with the square and compasses and the keystone portraying the themes of brotherly love, relief, and truth. This emblem is joined by the seal of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania by a cable toe, the age-old symbol of distance a Mason is to go to serve his fellow man. Today we honor Right Worshipful Grand, Past Grand Master Thomas Gammon IV, who became a Master Mason of Perkyoma Lodge on fight number 595 on May the 21st, 1991. Brother Thomas Gammon IV took bold steps to save lives of not only the fraternity, but Masonic Village residents, the staff of the Masonic Charities, Masonic youth, and countless others 
through this strong, selfless leadership he demonstrated during this pandemic. On March 220, when COVID-19 swept the nation and the world, Brother Thomas Gammon IV made the very difficult decision to pause meetings, celebrations, and in some cases, operations. He led the Grand Lodge officers in their decision to provide needed funds to ensure residents and staff of the Masonic Villages had appropriate personal protective equipment when other communities could not afford it and suffered severe consequences as a result. As a volunteer fire chief and fire marshal, he continued to risk his own life to save others despite, despite this increased personal risk. In commemoration of the right worshipful Grand Master, past Grand Master Tom and Gavin's the fourth unselfish acts of service, we present to you this silver cup. Known as the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania Thomas uh, Thompson Award to celebrate your response to the call of Masonic duty by hastening to the rescue and saving human lives. The engraving reads as follows. Presented to Brother Thomas Gammon IV, Right Worshipful Past Grand Master, December 27, 2021, by the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. You on the other side, you're in this picture. You can't say no. <laughs> I did not deserve this. Yes, you did. Yeah. George, you hold it. Ladies, brethren, and guests, I'm so humbled by this, but I don't deserve this. I just love the fraternity so much, and I love everybody in it. I thank you for it, but I don't deserve it. This is for true heroes, and deserve. that's not me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. You bet. I don't deserve that. Absolutely don't. You know, that's why I love this guy. He says he doesn't deserve it. And last night we had a little video presentation about the Grand Master. He's on a roof on a ladder and the flames are right behind him, right? Okay, I'm the Grand Master, I'm not buying it. <laughs> Brother Grand Secretary, I believe you have another duty. It's so yes. good when he calls me Grand Master. Yes, I've been waiting six years for this. Yes, Grand Master. I can't get used to it yet. <laughs> December 27, 2000, right, Worshipful Grand Master. December 27, 2021, whereas Brother Thomas Gammon IV served this Grand Lodge as its right, Worshipful Grand Master during the years of 2020 and 2021, and whereas following the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic in early 2020, Brother Gammon, dedicated fire chief and water rescue specialist, understood the urgency of the moment and sacrificed many of his plans to lead the Grand Lodge and its charities through the pandemic with inspiring compassion and concern for our Masonic community. And whereas the Grand Lodge desires to recognize Brother Gammon's selfless and encourage courageness service to our fraternity during this unprecedented period in which world history by establishing a scholarship in his honor for members of our Masonic community that are pursuing higher education or advanced training in furtherance of their engagement as a first responder. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Pennsylvania Masonic Youth Foundation established the Thomas Gammon IV First Responder Scholarship for the purpose of making annual grants to assist members of our Masonic community with higher education or advanced training expenses incurred in furtherance of their engagement as a first responder in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Such grants to be made using funds awarded by the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania Higher Education Fund. 
on the terms and subject to the conditions established by the Pennsylvania Masonic Youth Foundation and further resolve that it is the hope and prayer of this Grand Lodge that the recipients of the grants from the Thomas Gammon IV First Responder Scholarship Fund be imbued with the selfless, selflessness and, cur and courageous spirit of its namesake. Thank you, Grandmaster. This means so much to me. Teaching, the youth, teaching kids. The youth are our future. And if we don't give them the tools to succeed, we have failed. So yeah. thank you very, very much for thank this. You. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay, Christmas is over. Good. <laughs> Now I can do whatever I want, right, Brother Sir Grand Secretary? Yes, Grand Master. <laughs> you know, I was sitting here, we had an early meeting this morning at 8 o'clock, and I have a bunch of notes here. And I'm sitting here thinking, poor Haynes, he's going off the rails. This is over. I completely changed my train of thought. So here's my vision for the next two years. First of all, I want to thank everybody on the Grand Lodge team, and I mean everybody. I want to thank the incredible team of folks that were elected in their positions today. I want to thank the grand, past Grand Masters. There's not one of these gentlemen over here that I haven't learned something from, okay? That I'm not going to use something that each one of them taught me, meld it in my own way to try and make a difference with the team we have assembled. And to the District Deputy Grand Masters, you have my total support. We got a lot, lot to work, a lot of work to get to do. To me, the key of our fraternity, the first thing we have to do is have a positive attitude. We can't be naysayers. Grand Chaplain last night told us about the, our foundation of faith on which we build everything. Well, on top of the foundation of faith, the foundation of our fraternity is the Grand Lodge, the lodges, and its members. Okay? So that's the foundation. Now, I don't want to give away too many Masonic secrets, okay? But the last, I've, we've been going about it wrong. And we have for 300 years. But we, we never had to worry about it, right? Brother Williams, come on up here. Brother Mark, number two, he has no idea this is coming. Brother Scott Williams, I met, he is a COO and president of Jack Williams Tires for the whole western part of the state. Now, I work for Flynn's Tires, and I'm thanking God every day we don't have to do battle, okay? And he was picked because I know his character, I know the way he runs his business, and that's why he was picked. Now, I've got to ask you a question. Let's just say there were a million cars, and I was working for you, okay. and I'm selling tires for Scott Williams, right? I'm out there doing my thing every day. And at the end of the year, there's a million cars. I said, Brother Williams, I think I did a good job. Well, what do you mean, Jeff? I sold 2,000 of those folks a set of tires. How long would I work for you? Well, a million, million cars needs 4 million tires, actually. Right. But not very long, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> My point. Thank you for your help. Thank you, Grandma. Okay. So my point is, Okay, we have 13 million, 7,000 people in this state. Of that, 26% of them, I'm a numbers guy, of that, 26% of them are underage, not able to join. Of the remaining number, 51% are women, 49% are men. And this, if you don't get anything out of this, the whole day, I'm not about everybody being a Mason. I'm strictly selective invitation. We have to guard the West Gate. For those in, the, in, the, in our audience today that don't really know, we do a wonderful charities. Every group here has a charity. The mon amount of money that Masons donate for the cause of good every, every day is incredible in this country. 
But our core mission, and it sounds trite, is we are here to make good men better. So for those, that is our core mission. That is what we focus on, okay? So the focus has to be to find those quality individuals, okay? And talk to them about Freemasonry. Now, we didn't do it for 280 years. Brother Sturgeon changed all that. We can. We still don't know how, okay? So I take that 49%. Just in rough math, I'm coming up with 5 million men over the age of 18, okay? And unless, unless we're in worse shape than I ever thought we were, I'm saying let's just say 20% of those folks are good guys that should be in the fraternity. Anybody do the quick math? And I know these guys, I know the treasurer will be all over this. That leaves me one million member, one million men. They're eligible for, for uh, Pennsylvania masonry. We would love to have it, have them in our fraternity. They would benefit us and we would benefit them, which would benefit our communities. So you're telling me one million men and we're getting 2,000. Let me say that again. You're telling me there's one million men and we're getting 2,000. So what are we gonna do to fix it? All right? I can sit up here and talk all day where the rubber re meets the road, right? You like that, don't you, Scott? That's right, <laughs> where the rubber meets the road. So here's what we're gonna do. The first thing we're gonna do is when we talk about our fraternity to folks, right now, we give them a little bit of what it's about. Just, they decide if they're gonna petition the lodge, okay? Now, without giving away too many secrets, the last thing that every person in here heard when they got their third degree is you're a Mason. You're entitled to certain rights and privileges. And I want an honest show of hands. How many people, I don't care how long you've been Mason, did somebody actually sit down with you and explain it to you? Exactly. If I went to Scott Williams and he was my customer and he came into my shop and he said, I need four tires. And I said, give me your keys. Well, what are you doing? Well, I'm putting four tires on. Well, I don't know anything about the tires. So what? Right? That's the way we handle Freemasonry. Does that make sense to anybody? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Freemasonry. We're going to talk about the benefits. We're going to talk about what Brother Bill and his team do at the Masonic Villages, the outreach program, the widows program, which, by the way, will be my charity for the next two years. We have about 14,000 widows in this state that we should be supporting, and we, I think we have about 15% of them signed up on the program. What are we doing? Right? We're going to concentrate on those kind of programs. We're going to concentrate when we explain masonry to people what the intangible benefits are of being a network, of being able to go anywhere in the world and find help. It doesn't matter where you go. I've been, not all over the world, but I've been a few places. I've been invited by complete strangers to come to their house for dinner and spend the night. That's a fraternity. We're going to be a fraternity. If we treat people right, if we're fraternal, and if we put pride back in our membership, people will join Freemasonry. So what we're going to do is we're coming up with a new committee. It's called the MAC, and it doesn't stand for Money Abuse Center. It stands for Masonic Awareness. I said before, we don't know how to talk about our fraternity. Past Grand Master Gavin is going to chair it. We've identified two or three members in each district. If you don't feel comfortable about talking, talking about the fraternity, they'll be on the internet, they'll be with your district deputy, you just get, give us a name and we will talk intelligent with that person. We're not twisting any arms. You have to want to join this fraternity. Does any of this make sense? Okay. Well, they're all going to nod their heads because I'm the Grand Master, right? <laughs> okay, thank you. And what so so just a, just in a few more minutes, what we're going to do today is we're going to give you a few things to tell you how we're going to do it. Okay, tonight after dinner, before the entertainment, and I promise it's going to be about 20 to 30 minutes. I'm going to ask you to really pay attention. First of all, my grandkids want to speak for five minutes. I don't like to not be in control. I have no idea what they're going to say. 
So I'm kind of a little scared about that. Then we have a presentation, but then I'm going to, tonight I'm going to tell you why we're doing it. So right now I'm going to tell you how. Tonight I'm going to tell you why. So we got the MAC committee, okay? We're going to talk about the benefits of Freemasonry up front. We're going to, don't strike me down here, we're going to market the fraternity, okay? Now I know there's a lot of cringing. I cringe when I think about it. Because what are we looking for? I just said we're looking for good people. We've got to guard the rest gate. Now we're going to open it up, right? That doesn't make any sense, right? Here's the deal. Because our membership won't do it, we're going to do it. But that creates an inherent problem. The vetting has to be much more precise, for lack of a better word. We really have to, we have, like, as I would say, what I used to say when we used to bring people into our traditional, we got to date a while before we go steady. We got to get to know these people, okay? It's, gonna, it's like an inversion of the way we do things. So we're going to need to vet these people, and we're going to target our audience. So that's not going to be for everybody, okay? So after we do that, these folks are going to have to actually earn their way in. We're going to make it easy, but through the Masonic Education Committee, they're going to be required to pass online reviews before they get the next degree. And it's going to be a no-fail test. And they're going to work one-on-one -on -one with their mentors to make sure they pass the test. We are going to crisscross this state between February, January 29th and the second week of April, 24 meetings. 12 of them will be open houses. Anybody that you think would be a good, ma good man for our fraternity, bring them. I'll do the rest. Second meeting is going to be a town hall meeting. The second thing we have to do, once we get them in the lodge, what, we, what do we do? If we continue to feed them a piece of pie, read the minutes, and read the bills, we're not going to get any far, very far. So what we're going to do is these town hall meetings, we're going to outline the responsibilities of the lodge, the responsibilities of the Grand Lodge, and the responsibilities of the district deputies. There's ways to do this. As you're here, here, here tonight, our problems are formidable, but they are not insurmountable. It takes a village, and we have it right here. We have the best that Freemasonry has to offer right in this room. Give yourselves a, hand, a round of applause for that, because I mean that. So then, so then what's going to happen? We're going to have these meetings, right? Anybody, we're going to try and make it a little easier. My, my friend Tom Sturgeon, we've got to make it easier. We're going to make it a little easier. Okay? So what's going to happen is in April and May, we're going to read petitions, right? June, we're going to vote on them. In September, I'm not the guy that has his finger on everybody, right? I'm going to encourage your districts to have an evening. You pick the night. You pick the venue. It's your district. It's your lodges. I'm not running your lodges, right? And we're going to have a first and second degree, able to be done in one night. Folks are going to have to pass their online review in October. Your district can pick an all-star degree team. We all have ritualists out there that really love to do that, right? And they'll get their third degree. That's the plan. You have to make it happen. So that's the start of it. This is like a fire. Anybody a Boy Scout? How many Boy Scouts? You had to go through the survival and you had the flint, remember? How long did it take you to get the spark? And then when you got the spark, you had to nurture it along, right? If we get this thing going, and it's a start. It's not going to fix itself in my two years. This is just a start. The whole team is on board. It's a great team. We've talked and talked and talked about what we're going to do. We've talked with Bill. So this isn't just something I just came up with on my own. The idea is that hopefully, if we get this to burn and aflame, once we learn how to do it, I keep going back to Brother Williams, the hardest thing their family ever did was open their first store. The second hardest thing they did was open their second store. After that, they were on a roll because they figured it out, just like a sheet store, right? Same, same that's what we got to look at. This is a business. Now I'm going to give you the number, right? 
To grow our fraternity, I don't think anybody's ever done this. To grow our fraternity, we need about 6,000 members a year. The number is 8%. I can't make it any simpler. Your lodge has enough. Uh, correct my math now, Brother Grant Treasure. Lodge has 100 members, they need 8 members. My lodge has almost 500 members, we need 40 members. See that? Maybe I'm just more than a tire guy, right? Um, so that's the plan. That's my vision. We can do this. I want everybody right now to say, we got this. I mean it. We got this. You know why we're saying that? Because we have a positive attitude. Let me hear it one more time. Not loud enough. Got it? Got it? So tonight, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why we're going to do this. And it's, it's more than dollars and cents for the lodges. It's so much more than dollars and cents for the Grand Lodge. And I hope you'll pay attention, and I hope that I strike a chord in each and every one of you. Thank you, and God bless. Now that was supposed to be the last thing I did. And there's one man in this room that hates a introductions. I don't even know what to call you. Right Worshipful Acting Deputy Grandmaster. Grandmaster, you can call me anything you want. I believe you have a service to I, perform. I do. Ladies, brethren, and guests, we pause on our del deliberations for the purpose of paying a tribute of respect to a brother who has served in the ranks of the Masonic fraternity for 70 years. The years of man are readily divisible by the symbolic number three. Youth, the springtime of life when with vision and energy the attainment of useful knowledge is planned. Manhood, bring to fruition the visions of youth by performing our duties to God, our country, our neighbors, and ourselves. Maturity the time for relaxation, contemplation, and retrospection, the period of time that from the experiences of our past, we are able to give counsel, advice, and guidance for the building of every good and laudable service for the perpetuity of Freemasonry. In recognizing this 70-year membership, the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania has seen fit to prepare a service emblem of gold. Brother Jeffrey, M. Wonderling, Right Worshipful Grandmaster, will now present this emblem. Brother Grand Secretary, read from the record. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, Brother Samuel Carlson Williamson was initiated into Freemasonry in Tyrion Lodge number 612 on October the 15th, 1951. He was passed to, the degree, to a fellow craft mason on November the 12th, 1951, and was raised to the sublime degree of a master mason on December the 10th, 1951. You sure you want to stand this long, Steve? I can take over. I would never introduce you. Brethren, ladies, and friends, Brother Sam, 70 years ago, you stood before the altar of Freemasonry, where you obligated yourself to be a true and faithful brother of the craft, to observe with diligence your duties to God, your country, your neighbor, and yourself. For, 50, for 70 years, you have labored to spread Masonic light and knowledge and have reached this maturity that is especially recognized by the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. Before engaging further, let us invoke a divine blessing upon this present undertaking. Brother Chaplain. Most holy and glorious Lord God, thou great architect of heaven and earth, who art the giver of all good gifts and graces, vouchsafe to us thy guidance and grace. 
Look down with favor upon this, our brother, who has been endued with the spirit of masonry during the length of days. Give him grace to continue this service in strength, health, and abiding faith. May the light of thy countenance shine upon him, that he may dwell in thy love all the days of his life. This we ask to the glory and honor of thy name, world without end. Amen. Psalm about faith. All right, you okay? Thank you. We're not done yet. <laughs> Brethren, ladies, and friends, you have heard, read the Masonic record of Brother Samuel Carlson Williamson, Right Worshipful Past Grand Master. He has reached the 70th milestone in his pilgrimage in symbolic, in symbolic masonry. Brother Williamson, in recognition of your 70 years of service to the Masonic fraternity, the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania prepares an emblem of gold. By virtue of the authority in me vested, by the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of the most ancient and honorable fraternity of free and accepted Masons of Pennsylvania, I do present you with the Masonic Award of Gold. Where is it? Thank you. You have it. Thank you, Grand Master. As a visible token of its fraternal love and grateful appreciation. May you wear this emblem with honor to yourself, with pleasure to yourself, and with honor to the fraternity wheresoever dispersed. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Brother Thank Sam. You. I'm going <laughs> you know, to say a few words first, and then we'll talk about it. first. Yeah. Forty years ago, tomorrow, I was in Albuquerque, and a few days ago, I was there in Right Worshipful Past Grand Master, I bl believe you have a few remarks. My brethren and ladies, it's uh, the highest honor I've had in a long, long time to make this presentation to Brother Williamson. He has been a mentor to many of us. He's been a friend to many, 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 many more. But what he is, and you should all remember, he is the greatest Mason in the history of Western Pennsylvania. Thank you. How does one pass that act? Uh, well, it was been a great uh, ride these 70 years. Uh, I was just reminiscing uh, on December the 28th, 1981, 40 years ago, I was presented as Grandmaster. So it, uh, I made a wonderful group of friends my life has been changed because of Freemasonry, certainly for the better. And uh, when I think what I would have missed had I not gone into Masonry, that was very upsetting. And I'm happy to be here and uh, happy to receive this 70 year pin from my good brothers and friends. Thank you. Thank you. Drive off the edge. Could I have, could I have the other, the right watchful, the other Grand Lodge officers up here, please? You get next to see them. Hold on a second. We got two more. Okay, guys. Pretend it's, pretend it's a child line. <laughs> I didn't think it would take you that long for a child line. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Neil, Neil and King. Judge Kahn. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Huh? Okay, Sam. We want to make sure you're in reverse. There you go. Yeah, who sold you those tires? 
Scott, you missed a sale. <laughs> oh, this is my favorite part. Brethren, at this time, your Grand Lodge would be pleased to receive any contribution from members, lodges, or Masonic districts. And please keep in mind, my charity for the next two years will be the Widows Program through the outreach of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania Charities. If you would. You take that. Right words for Grand Master. That's what I think of that. Go ahead. I'd like to present to you yeah. benefit of the Grand Masters Golf Tournament in Central Pennsylvania. But I would tell you, and I'm pleased, that many lodges across our entire jurisdiction send contributions to add to this. So I want to start your flurry off with $8,000. Thank you very much. And please extend my best wishes to all those involved. Right, Worshipful Grand Master, uh, on behalf of Richmond Solomon's Lodge Number Three, I have one thousand dollars for the Masonic Homes and one thousand dollars for the Library and Museum. I'll make sure that in the future uh, it is for the widows. Uh, unfortunately, the checks are already made. That's out. fine. So, but thank you. Thank you, and please extend my best wishes to everybody involved. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Right Worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of Masonic District C, I have checks um, from various Masonic charities from Richard Vaux's Brotherhood Lodge, number 126, totaling $10,500. And from Concordia Lodge, number 67, I also have a number of checks to various Masonic charities, totaling $21,000. Thank you very much, and please extend our gratitude I just want to go through the procedure. I See this? Goes to Mark. Well, no, this goes here, and it goes here. Sharon, you watching this? I can't lose these. <laughs> Sorry, <Mark>. I can. <laughs> right, Worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of the Grand Holy War Arch Chapter of Pennsylvania. I would like to present you this check for $1,000 for your favorite charity. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And please extend our best wishes to your group. Just walk out this way. Right Worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of your appointed officers of the 52nd Masonic District, we know it's becoming the time of year when it's a little chilly out there and you're going to be traveling the uh, Commonwealth presenting uh, district deputies. So we want to give you this scarf to help keep you warm. <laughs> also, one of the, on, a, on a cooler note, and I'll let Grand Master explain the scarf in a second. On one of my many trips to uh, Hobaugh Lodge, number 276 in Brookville, I noticed on the past master's wall, a fellow whose last name was Wonderling. And I got to asking around, and I had a spy in the inside of the Wonderling household, and she found out that this we believe to be your uncle. And I was talking to the members there, and your uncle donated a top hat to the lodge when he was worshipful master of the lodge in 1956, I believe. As you can see, his name's on the inside. The lodge wanted you to have the hat. Wow, that's incredible. Thank you very much. Last but not least, checks totaling $1,000 from the 52nd District. Thank you very much. No way he's a wonderling. There ain't no way. Thank you very much. 
Uh-oh, now we're in trouble. White Worship of Grand Master, it is my honor and my pleasure to present to you through the Cigar Lodge Number no. 1 a donation of $1,500 that was raised efforts through the Valley of Allentown Cigar Picnic, the Valley of Harrisburg Cigar Picnic, the uh, 8th Masonic District Cigar Picnic, the Valley of Pittsburgh Monthly Cigar Picnic, and numerous cigar events throughout the year. This $1,500 gift today brings the grand total of $3,000 that the Cigar Lodge has donated to the Grand Master Charity Funds in two and a half years. It is our extreme pleasure. Thank you, Grand Smoke. Can you stay right here for a minute? Please just stay right here. Don't move. Diane, I'll watch him. Right Worshipful Grand Master Wonderling, it is my pleasure to present to you for your charity. Oakdale Lodge would like to pledge to you $5,000 along with a card stating that donation. Thank you Thank very you. much, Brother Williams. God bless. Thank you very much for being here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on a second, I gotta do some housekeeping. Ah, uh, there they are. Okay. Brother Ed Stum has been a, a Grand Tyler for how many years? 18 years. 18 Grand years. Master. And every one of the, uh, most of these folks over here have put up with him. Okay? Right. Now he also is a, is a cigar smoker, and he started in jest the Cigar Lodge. And he is the Grand Master of the Cigar Lodge. He is the Grand Smoke. Okay? <laughs> if you go anywhere near the front door this afternoon or this evening, you can find him. All right? Now, he also has a charter. Now, the past administration agreed against my better judgment. It's probably the only argument we ever had. I didn't want to do it. But they've done such a good job, he's under review. Okay? If I walk out there and any one of your members is smoking a cigar and that warrant's not present, you are in big trouble. <laughs> it's over, okay? Now with that, on behalf of all these guys, they all chipped in. I don't know anything about this and you can thank my son Michael for getting this. This are handmade cigars by Rocky Patel. Oh my. There you go. <laughs> Brother Rocky. Brother Rocky signed that, and he also insisted that he give you one of his lighters. So this is for you, for all your hard work and dedication to the Grand Lodge and absolutely driving us nuts. <laughs> okay? Thank you very Grand much Master, for everything. Thank you very much. You it bet. has been a pleasure journey. Yes. If only you were a Pitt fan, you'd be okay. There you go. It's all you. I got to do one other thing and then we're going to close this break. Could I recognize Wonderlings Warriors from Lodge Odd Luchum number 812 and King Solomon's Lodge number 346? Please stand. That's right. <laughs> Brethren, this is your honor because you guys made me who I am. Thank you. <laughs> Brother, right worshipful grand treasurer, you know I waited to give you the checks. I want to see how fast you could add. Do you have a report at this time? Right, Worshipful Grand Master, I am pleased to report that the Treasury has collected $50,000 today. Right, Worshipful Grand Secretary, this is his favorite part. I want you to revel. Just take a minute. Just revel in it. 
Do you have any further business? Do I worship Grandmaster? I have no further business. <laughs> Brother James Wisenreed, Provincial Grand Master of the Royal Order of Scotland, will you respond for the invited guests? The Grand Ma uh, Master of Ceremonies will escort you. Brother Jim is a Grand Master for the United States for the Royal Order of Scotland. Right, Worshipful Grand Master, Brother Jeff. We are pleased to attend this annual communication and it is my pleasure to respond for distinguished guests on this important occasion where the term of the Right Worshipful Grand Master, Brother Thomas Gammon IV, comes to a close and another, the term of Brother Jeffrey M. Wonderling, is set to begin. First, a word on the new Grand Master the beginning of another Grand Lodge biennium under the leadership of the Right Worshipful Grand Master, Brother Jeffrey M. Wonderling, past master of King Solomon's Lodge number 346. I don't know if he knows it, but your Right Worshipful Grand Master and I have the honor of coming to you as holders of the Demolay Legion of Honor. And I am sure that all the Demolays, wheresoever dispersed, about the globe are proud of your accomplishment on this important day, as are Sharon, Thomas, Michael, and grandchildren, Julia and Dylan. I know Jeff to be a just and upright Mason, well suited to lead the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge, beginning today and for the next two years. Second, the Right Worshipful past Grand Master, Brother Gammon. It is said that those who come ahead of us stand on the shoulders of giants. And I believe we learned today that Brother Gammon is one of those giants. He was the right man at the right time. He led the right worshipful Grand Lodge at the right time and in the right way through this disaster we've come to know as COVID. I'm sure there are many other things he would have liked to have done during the last two years, but he stepped up to the challenge keeping the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge intact and ready to enter the next 235 years. As you and Cheryl return to spend more time at Procopian Lodge number 595, I'm sure you do it with the thanks of your brethren and the guests for a job well done at a difficult time for an important Grand Lodge in this country of ours. Let me repeat, congratulations and thanks for a job well done. And now the Right Worshipful Grand Master prepares to lead the Masons of this ancient and honorable fraternity. Let me remind you that Freemasonry is as important now as it ever was. I want to remind you of the challenge of one Mason about 25 years ago, Judge B David B. Sentel, a member of Excelsior Lodge number 261 in Charlotte, North Carolina. He was nominated to the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. The nomination was held up in the Senate because Judge Sentel was a member of the Masonic Fraternity. He was a judge and judged very well qualified by the American Bar Association. But this confirmation was blocked because of his membership in Freemasonry. In fact, he was asked if he planned to maintain his membership in Masonic organizations. At that moment, according to Sentel, if I had told the senator that I did not intend to maintain my membership in Excelsior 261, not only would I have been saying that I've been doing something wrong to have held two judgeships for four years as a man and a mason, but I would have been repudiating the principles that led my father, my grandfathers, and my uncles, and my brother into this fraternity. I would have been reflecting on the judicial character of the late Judge Warlick and dozens and even hundreds of other judges who are brothers and whom I admire. It was then that I stated my intention to remain a Mason.
Just think, as Mason at the pinnacle of his career about to be confirmed as the Chief Judge of the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, a court many feel to be the most important next to the Supreme Court, if only he would deny his membership in the craft. He could not. He was finally confirmed, but only after a difficult battle with much support from Brother Master Masons in the Congress. Let me conclude by saying that we, your distinguished guests, are pleased to be with you on this important occasion to offer our congratulations to both Brother Wonderling and Brother Gammon and wish them much continued success. We thank you and the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge for your generous hospitality and extend our very best wishes for every continued happiness and success. Thank you, Grandmaster. All the best. Thank, thank you. you. Brother Raymond T. Dietz, Right Worshipful Past Grand Master, have you anything to offer for the good of Freemasonry in general or this Grand Lodge in particular? Right Worshipful Grand Master Jeffrey M. Wonderling. On behalf of the Right Worshipful Past Grand Masters, I bring you greetings and congratulations on becoming Pennsylvania's 124th Right Worshipful Grand Master. The path you have chosen to arrive here today has presented many challenges and milestones. The Right Worshipful Past Grand Masters are very proud of you and your accomplishments while serving on the Grand Lodge line over the past six years. We would also like to recognize our new First Lady, Sharon for the many sacrifices that you and the family have made over the years to assure this day would occur. Right Worshipful Grand Master, you have already laid the foundation for your future. Now you will lay the foundation for the future of Freemasonry. Use all of the working tools that have been taught to you over the years wisely. Always take care of the craft and the family, never forgetting the widows, the children, and those who are in need. Right Worshipful Grand Master, you have the support of the Right Worshipful Past Grand Masters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very nicely done, thank you. Thank you. All right, Worshipful Grand Secretary, have you anything to offer for the good of Freemasonry in general or this Grand Lodge in particular? Right, Worshipful Grand Master. Right, Worshipful Past Grand Master Thomas Gammon IV. It's been a pleasure to serve with you and for you during these last two years. Been a little difficult, but you know what? You are the right person for the right time, and I've said that many times. You've accomplished a lot, more than you'll ever know. And we are so grateful to have you as our leader these past two years. Karen and I both value our friendship that we have come to know between, with you and Cheryl, and we look forward to some more exciting times as we travel together. I know we will in the future. Grand Master, it is truly my honor to be able to be on your team, and Karen and I look forward to uh, some adventures, and I, I know we'll have some. We have a pretty aggressive schedule, and I think you, too, are the right person to follow. 
the Grand, Grand Master Gammon because I know you will take us into the future and you will make continue our successes that we have come to know. And to all the, uh, the brethren and ladies that came out for this weekend, we thank you for coming. And we want to wish each and every one of you a blessed and, and happy and safe New Year. Thank you, Right Worshipful Grand thank Master. You. Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer, do you have anything to offer? Thank you, Right Worshipful Grand Master. Uh, past Right Worshipful Grand Master Gammon, I, I heard a few things during the presentation of the Thompson Award that uh, there's definitely a, a sense of humility and honor. This, to me, this fraternity is about mentorship and having and growing better as a man, a mason, a father, a family man, and a career in, in my career. And I have many heroes in this fraternity, but Gra Grandmaster Gammon, you are truly at the top. I truly admire you, and you are a mentor and a leader for me. So thank you very much. Thank Grandmaster Wonderling. Neighbor. Neighbor. I'm on the cheap side of the town, you know, near the patch. He's, he's in the higher rent district. Um, <clears throat> I know we, um, I echo the comments of the Grand Secretary. I look forward to working with you. And uh, it's going to be a great two years, and it's going to be a fun ride. So thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Adam. Hello, 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 hello. Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden, welcome. Thank you. Have you anything to offer? Right Worshipful Grand Master, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I began every one of my visitations as a district deputy grand master by saying that, and, and it, I feel it more today than I ever have before. Um, thank you, Right Worshipful Grand Master. Uh, last night in our, in our sermon at our Vesper service, we learned uh, a few important things. One was that I am a whiz with foundation makeup. <laughs> number, number two, though, is that we go nowhere by accident and we go nowhere alone. So I, I, I want to thank the people who have brought me along on this journey. To you, Right Worshipful Grand Master, and to our friends in the Distinguished East, Brother Sturgeon and Brother Williamson, and all of you who have been my mentors, I appreciate what you have done. To our District Deputy Corps, who I was a part of for, for 10 wonderful and stressful years, I, uh, I appreciate having been uh, your mentor, your mentee, uh, sometimes with the exact same person on the same day, interestingly enough. It has been a great journey. And uh, last but not least, to my family, uh, I, c I couldn't have done this without you. To my, wi my wife, Gail, my family who is at home in Florida watching this on television, and my, my cousins and, and in-laws who have come along to for this, I thank you for helping mold me into the man that uh, was recognized by Brother Jeff to take this, to this chair. So as I begin this very intentional and non-accidental journey, I begin it with all of you at my side. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Grandmaster. Thank you. Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden, have you anything to offer? Right Worshipful, dang. <laughs> right Worshipful Grand Master. Uh, let me start with uh, Right Worshipful Past Grand Master Gammon. I'd like to thank you very much for your dedication to this great fraternity and for your confidence in me to be able to, to take this position two years ago. Um, I, I, I appreciate it and I look forward to many years of uh, tapping you on the shoulder and asking you questions because I'm gonna need it. <laughs> Um, working my way around, Brother PJ, I'm looking forward to working with you. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a great time over the next six years together, and, and I think it, I'm really looking forward to it. Brother Larry Durr and Shelley, I'm sure you're watching this online, and I'd like to say your presence here today is missed, and um, we look forward to seeing you soon. And I wish um, I wish Shelley a fast recovery, um, Grand Master. My wife was curious why I ordered. Um, super glue in bulk, uh, and, and I had to explain to her the reason was I, I, somehow I'm going to I'm going to need to stay in this saddle for the next two years. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm looking forward to an exciting time uh, being a part of your team. And uh, with that, thank you very much. I would also, you know, lacking having to buy a dress, I would like to introduce my beautiful wife, Allison. She's sitting over here. Um, thank you, Allison, for your support all these years. Thank you. Brother, brother number four, 
<laughs> Thomas Gammon, Acting Deputy Grandmaster. Have you anything to offer? Right Worshipful Grandmaster, first I would like to say good luck with your term. I know you'll do the craft well, but this is only temporary for today, just so you know. I'm not going to be the Deputy Grandmaster sitting next to you, but truly, I wish you and your team all the best. And as I said before, if you need anything, please don't hesitate to call Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Happy New Year's to you all. Thank, Thank you. you. I would just like to also recognize my wife, Sharon. Where is she? She's there. She's waiting. You can stand up, honey. Thank you. For... Don't sit down. Who's the grandmaster? You know, I asked her if she was ever going to call me grandmaster, and it was an emphatic no. Sharon, without you, we couldn't do this. And with you, we got this. Thank you very much. I want to thank my whole family for coming out. I have relatives from the little burg at Somerville over there, and I have friends. And, and I'm not going to introduce every one of you because we're getting hungry. But thank you for being here and your support. Uh, the June quarterly communication will be of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania will be held on Saturday, June 11th. 2022 at 10 o'clock a.m. at the Holiday Inn located in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Don't think there's ever been one there. Hope you can come out and support us. Save the dates. August 20th, 2022 is the 25th and final meeting in the hills. Now we have a sportscaster in Pennsylvania or in Pittsburgh for the Penguins. He's in the Hall of Fame. His name is Mike Lang. You're not at a great game when the Penguins crush somebody. You know what he says? If you miss it, shame on you for six weeks. Because it is going to be spectacular, and that's all I'm going to say. I'm not telling anybody anything. But if you want to see something truly cool, you be there on August 20th. March 18th, 2023 will be the 150th anniversary of the Masonic Temple in Philadelphia. We're going to have a gala. It's going to be kind of similar to what Brother Ray did because he did such a great job. We're going to enhance it. Uh, I also want to just give you a little tease. There's going to be one Masonic rifle. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be for, from Henry. They're working on it right now. It's going to be a, a fundraiser. There's only one, and it's all about the Masonic Temple. It's going to be beautiful. And also, one of our brothers, Brother Ed Aiello, won five bottles of Pappy Van Winkle in a raffle. The good news is, the bad news is, he gave me one of the bottles, a 23-year-old, which is off the shelf, $8,000. The really good news is, I hate bourbon. Doesn't matter what it is. So it's safely tucked away, and we're going to do, we're going to do a, a raffle to raise money for the Grand Lodge with that. And I want to thank him for that. Uh, June 10th of 2023, save the date, will be the, the June quarterly communication. It's all about demolaying the youth groups all day. I hope you can save that date. Anybody who made reservations for the banquet and does not have their tickets, they will be available. There will be a, at the far end, there will be one of those fold-up doors. There's a counter. There will be a will call area. Just go over there and give them your name, and they will have your tickets. I want to extend a special thanks to Brother Robert F. Trimble, Past Master, New London Lodge, number 545, and Brother Jeffrey P. Lee's, member Thompson Lodge, number 340. They're a Grand Lodge organist. And also, I can never say enough about Brother Raymond E. Foos, past master, member of Newtown Lodge, number 427, soloist. And thank you for your presentations. It's always appreciated. And a, and a big thank you to all those out there in TV land. I keep forgetting about that, to the Durs and my neighbors and everybody who's watching. Thank you for support. God bless you. And with that, Brother David A. Eichelberger, Grand Chaplain, give the closing prayer.
May the blessings of heaven rest upon us and upon all regular Freemasons. May we practice out of the Grand Lodge those principles of religion and morality that are taught within it. And may every moral and social virtue cement us in the bonds of peace and fraternal love and procure thy gracious favor, O blessed Lord God, who livest and reignest in indescribable glory and happiness forever and ever. Amen. So I'm out of pay. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, a peace that was meant to be with God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let me walk with my brother in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let I now declare this annual grand communication of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania closed. The brethren will stand fast until the Grand Lodge officers have retired. Brother Grand Marshal, form the recessional. Grand Percivant, Grand Stewards, Grand Deacons, Grand Chaplains. Aids to the Grand Master. Past District Deputy Grand Masters. District Deputy Grandmasters.
Distinguished guests of the right, worshipful Grandmaster. Right worshipful past grandmasters. Right Worshipful Grand Secretary, Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer. Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden, Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden. Right Worshipful Deputy Grandmaster. Grand Lodge Party, open order, inward face. The right Worshipful Grandmaster! Good one.
Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.